Hey everyone, it's Nick with Us vs. Herd. If it's your first time here, love the content, hit subscribe. If you want to get notifications for when we post videos, tap the bell. If you haven't yet joined our live channel, links are below in the description along with links for our Discord and our options trading group on Facebook. What I want to do today is a little bit different. I want to talk about long-term stock revealing a one of my one of my accounts for the first time normally this is an options trading channel we talk pretty much exclusively about options but i think it's important to also cover the other side of things long-term holds and this is just one of the accounts i have quite a few accounts with different brokers and i just want to share with you one of the accounts that i am currently working on what my positions are why i put them on and Kind of exposed to you what what these are so yes i do trade options but i do also invest in stocks long term you know this accounts pretty much you just set it and forget it as we go through you'll, you'll see how few trades i actually make with this account but i just want to show you my portfolio currently if you guys could do me the favor i would appreciate it hit the like button leave me a comment below let me know what you like what you don't like about this video so that i can improve but we're gonna jump right into it right now. And right now we're on the uh, portfolio screen. I'm looking at my, my portfolio currently is holding Boeing, BYND, Disney, T-Mobile, uh, AT&T, not T-Mobile, AT&T, and Teva. So the T, the T always screws me up because you think AT&T ticker is supposed to be AT&T, but it's just T because that's how OG they are. They're just, their ticker is just T, you know? <laughs> but anyways getting back into it so boeing you know the trades on here on my like account statement it only allows me to go back 370 days this is my active portfolio but i'll go through some of the some of the trades that i also made in the last year but to start off we're going to start off with boeing boeing i have currently i currently well to go over it let me start first saying the Currently, my open positions, I'm up $965.42 in profit. Today, the account closed down $54.71. I'm current, currently utilizing in stock, if we go to account statement here, in stock, my long stock value is currently at $5,500. So in long stock, you know, it gets a little bit confusing if you're looking at the buying power. But the long, st the long stock value is currently at $5,500 invested. So I only have a percentage of this account invested right now and that's because you want to have money in the account to take advantage of new opportunities and add positions shave off positions and and so forth uh, but going into boeing my average on boeing right now is i only have three shares there are 308 my thoughts on boeing at the time i did put this on january 22nd so about a month ago i put this trade on january 22nd let's look at boeing what they were doing on january 22nd and my thoughts on Boeing, so January 22nd, they were they were starting to recover. They were actually hitting the 52-week low. We actually hit 302 on January 22nd, and it started to pop back up. I added the position, and my thoughts were if this kind of came back down to 300, maybe get broke down to like 275, I would add a little bit more. Um, also, I really like that Boeing pays a $2.05 dividend as well. So as you can see, most of the stocks in the portfolio in this portfolio are dividend stocks. And there's reasons for that, which I'll show you, you know, kind of cover your losses and stuff and, and stuff like that. But right now, you know, my, my position on Boeing, I did say in my 2020, I did put a I, took, I did put a video out at the beginning of this year saying these are the five stocks I'm looking to buy this year. Boeing is one of them. So I started to add and what I start to do what I normally like to do is if, let's say this position you know, came down. I'll add a little bit more. I'll average down a little bit more. But we can't we pop back up to 350. So currently on Boeing, I'm currently up $83 on, on three shares I have. So not bad. I was hoping that was going to consolidate a little bit more. Maybe I can accumulate a few more shares. If it revisits this area, like if we come down from 350 back down to 320, 310, I would definitely like to add a couple more shares, try to, uh, try to average down if we can get to hit the low 300s. But at this point in time, it doesn't look like it's happening. It looks like it wants to revisit the 330 area right now on Boeing. So that's where I'm looking at on Boeing. Uh, BYND, so BYND, kind of controversial. I wasn't exactly sure if I wanted to play this or not, but I saw a good opportunity. 
And again, I only have five shares of this. This position is currently up $117. I bought this on October 24th, 2019. I only bought five shares. My average price is 96 bucks. So on October 24th, BYND, I bought it pre-earnings and we dropped pre-earnings and we were just we were just chilling. I was actually thinking of adding between November and December and I just didn't do it. I just was like, I'm not sure if I wanted to add five more shares, 10 more shares. I really just want to take it easy because BYND is kind of a, I don't know if you want to call it like a bubble stock. You know, went from 45 up to 239, came back down. I did like how it was stabling down, stabilizing down here. I was probably gonna, I was looking to add, but I just didn't do it because I didn't know what the market wanted to do. I didn't know what BYND wanted to do. And since it's because of the new stock, you know, they've only had three quarters of earnings. Sometimes you just, sometimes you just don't know. So I, I have a small position on there. It's currently up. It's currently up $117. Like I said, you know, my average is, my average is $96. So it's at 120, 120 right now. So we're up a little bit of money, not nothing huge, but we're up, you know, a little bit more than 20% on this position. I'm going to see what, what it wants to do here. If it does come back down to like a hundred, not 89, 85, I will probably look to add a little bit depending on what's driving the stock down or I might just leave, I might just leave BYND alone and just, just let it ride. Just, you know, see, see what happens. Disney. So Disney is a little bit more I've been holding Disney for a little bit while, for a little while here. So Disney, my first, the first time I bought Disney was in April of 2018. I bought five shares for 99 bucks. And then I recently, on January, January 2nd, I bought another five shares for $147. So my average right now is 123 on Disney. I'm down $34 on the second purchase, but I'm up $205 on the first first purchase of Disney. Disney also pays a dividend and you know they pay they pay 80, 80, 88 cents dividend. So right now my average is 123, we're at 140. You know, we're on a downtrend here. The numbers for Disney Plus were really good. It did pop up to one almost to 150 like 148 area, but just couldn't do it and now it's back down into its downtrending channel. So right now I'm just holding on it. I'm collecting the dividends and I'm gonna show you guys my dividend pay payments here in a second as well. So right now I'm just holding Disney. I don't think I'm gonna to add to the position unless unless it drops significantly. But right now, right now I'm just gonna hang out on that. Now AT&T is the only stock that I'm down in this portfolio right now. I'm up on every position except for AT&T. And AT&T, my average, I'm only down $5.85 on it, but and I'm up 170 at Disney if I didn't say that already. But I have 30 shares of AT&T. My average is $38.80. And I bought that also January 2nd, 2020. So January 2nd of this year. So AT&T, the reason why I bought the 30 shares is, you know, this has been pretty much trading sideways. What I'm looking for AT&T is also on my buy, buy list for taking advantage of the upcoming move to 5G. You know, 5G is gonna be huge. I wanted to get my feet wet into it a little bit, so I bought AT&T. AT&T has been pretty much just hanging out. Um, I did receive I did receive my first dividend payment on January 10th, so, and I bought it on January 2nd, so I'll, I'll show you how that co has covered my unrealized loss so far. So they pay a 52 cent, 52 two cent dividend is currently at 38.61. So I'm only down, you know, it only needs to climb up 20 more cents for me to break even on that. So that's for a long term hold. Take advantage of AT and T. I just put that on. Now Teva, Teva is the biggest winner right now in this portfolio. It's up 598 dollars in unrealized profit. And looking at this trade. I bought this in September of 2019, so September 9th, 2019. Bought 100 shares. I haven't sold any options against it, even though I wanted to. Um, I did buy it for $7.32 a share, and it's currently trading at, I think, $13. Yeah, $13.31. So I bought this, let me get the exact date. It was September 9th. So September, so September 9th, I bought it right down here right on this day, right in here, actually right at the low. So I bought it for 7.30. You know, my, 
Again, I was looking to probably add another 100 shares, but it really popped up, came back down, and Teva's been on a wild roller coaster. You know, I'm gonna probably start looking to shave some soon if we can pop back up to like the 15 area. Right now, I'm looking to see if it's gonna fill this gap here from from the thir 13 to 14, let's just call it 1450 area. So that's what I'm looking at on, on Teva right now. Teva doesn't pay a dividend. They do make, they're a generic drug manufacturer in Israel. And right now we're just kind of letting letting it ride. But I am monitoring this trade because it is getting a little bit. It's getting it's getting a little bit fat. We're almost up 100%. When it when it breaks 1450, we're going to be up 100% on this trade. Probably look to scale back. You know, for me for the long term holds, I'm not looking to. You know, I I I could just let it ride. I might just take off 20 shares, 30 shares, just to just do a little bit of portfolio management, a little pruning, and you know. That's that's the deal on Teva right now. Now, going into the account statement and going over my trade history. So the trade history over the last 370 days here, as you can see, it says 370 days back from today. I did sell on January 20th, Baba stock, January 20th, 2019. So a year ago today, I sold Baba stock. I was a long-term holder on that. I sold it for $172 a share. I don't remember what I bought it for, but I think I bought it around like the 150 area and I sold I sold let me go back to I sold it for the average price was $172.31 on okay, February 20th. So, it was it was hanging out down here you know, pretty much stayed the same price for quite a long time in terms of medium. It did pop up to 190, came down to 147. We had a crazy trade war, so I was trying to exit. We were up a bunch on Alibaba, not like a bunch, bunch, but we were up on that position on Alibaba. So I looked to scale it down quite a bit because I just wanted to manage my risk. I didn't want to have, I didn't want to be long Chinese stocks. And then they threatened to, you know, delist it and there's a whole bunch of drama as you guys know with the trade war so i just wanted to kind of exit that position obviously i still wish i had that position because it's now up to 220 but you live and you learn right the other the other trade that i got rid of as well was snapchat i got rid of that on i got rid of that on uh, january 22nd and then the same day i actually rolled into boeing so i took the profits and i rolled into i rolled into boeing now snap Snap, I was holding since like March 2018. My average was $16. And Snap reached a low of $9 or even $6 if we look over the last couple of years. So I was holding for, I was holding two years on Snap. It reached 482 and you're like, oh, why didn't you average down more when it was going lower? Because obviously, I honestly thought that Snap might go out of business. I mean, it was it was in penny stock land. You know, it was, it was in, it, <laughs> It was in really rough shape. I just said, okay, well, the amount of money in this that I invested in this, I could just let it ride. If it goes to zero, it goes to zero. You know, we'll see what happens. Thankfully, it did recover. I mean, if we did average down, we would be up, you know, 300, 400% if we averaged down quite a bit, you know, down here in the fours or fives or even sixes, you know, you, you would be up 100%. But right now, that's not, that's not what happened. So my average was around $16. I sold it. I exited the stock at $19.25. Right before earnings, I was thinking, you know, I'm not really too sure about earnings. We're profitable on this stock. So I sold it right before earnings, right up in here. When was 1925? Let me get the exact day. So that was on January 22nd. So right, let's get it right here. So yeah, right before, right before it ramped up to 1976. So right before it ramped up to 1976 and then it fell apart and I felt pretty good because, hey, I, was, I exited the position. I've been bag holding this for a long time. I was able to exit with a profit, even though it was a very small profit. I had 40 shares of that. So it was it was, it was was good to cut loose and I, I rolled that money into Boeing. So, you know, it was, I think Boeing is a little bit better play because it allows me to take advantage of the dividend. Also, I think it has more 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 room to go up than than. Than snap snap i don't really know how to price right now they don't make any money they're burning cash i mean it's 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 a disaster i mean they're not they're definitely they're nowhere near facebook in terms of revenue they don't make as much money per quarter they don't make any money in profits i mean it's 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 a rough stock so 
you know, after after riding it two years and seeing it hit lows of four or five dollars, six dollars, it was time to it's time to go reach nineteen twenty five, and I I, I I I I bailed right. And then the rest of these are just purchases that we already covered, but I do want to cover the dividend payments. So, you know, this is starting back. Let me start the newer one. So, the main reason why why I added AT and T the way that I did is. I did get this dividend payment here. It did come through February February third, twenty twenty, and I got fifteen dollars and sixty cents in cash. Now I can, through TD Ameritrade, they do allow drips, so that's a dividend reinvestment program. And I, I don't have it enabled right now, but basically, anytime you get a dividend, you can get it to buy a, a fraction of that stock to repurchase stocks. Well, I'm probably going to enable that soon, but I haven't yet. So what 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 would happen is fifteen dollars instead of going into cash into my buying power over here go, instead of going into cash it would actually buy more of AT and T stock. So, but so I got this fifteen dollar payment and I'm currently down five dollars. So even though I'm down five dollars on the stock, I got fifteen dollars in cash. So I'm actually plus ten dollars right now on on AT and T in terms of my in terms of my investment. So yes, I'm down on the stock five dollars and eighty five cents. But I just got another fifteen dollar and sixty cent um, dividend. So even if the stock stays the same around the same price, next quarter I'm going to get another fifteen dollars. The following quarter, I'm get another fifteen dollars, and those gains will start to add up. In you know, even though even though the stock isn't growing, you are getting something for your efforts. You are getting something for parking your money there. So you can kind of see how you can scale that up. So for me to do nothing and get fifteen dollars. You know, it's it's a, it's a pretty good deal. Um, the other ones are interest payments, and then I also got. Let's see here, in 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 Disney dividends, every quarter I'm getting about four dollars and forty cents right now. So it's a smaller, it's a small. I I don't have as many shares, so that's why that's smaller. But AT and T pays a pretty good dividend for the price that you get. So that's why you're able to scale up the shares a little bit, get a little bit heft, heftier dividend that covers any losses that you potentially could have on the stock, and then you could. Get these back here in cash, and then yeah. So Disney, here's another dividend payment for 440, and then these are just these are just getting interest payments. Like these 13 cents are just interest payments from from TD Ameritrade for my cash just sitting there. These are stock purchases. Let me go back up to. Here's another Disney dividend, so 440. So because I recently purchased Boeing, I haven't received a dividend for that. So right now my three dividend stocks are Disney, AT&T, and Boeing. So you know, building those dividends up a little bit, and before that I didn't have anything but but Ali, um, but Disney. So right now I'm in Disney, getting those four dollars and forty forty cent uh, dividends. AT and T, I'm getting I'm getting a fifteen dollar and sixty dividend, and then I'm gonna be getting about six dollars on Boeing. So I'll get six dollars every quarter, a little bit over six dollars every quarter for um, dividend on Boeing. So you know that's kind of my long term portfolio. You know we do have cash on the side to to take advantage of moves in the market. If we get a major sell off, we see a stock that's attractive, we want to average something down. So that's the portfolio. Let me know what you guys think in, link, think in the comments of this. If you guys want to see more videos of this, let me know. As always, stay safe, stay green. It's us versus herd.